Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hey you guys. So guys, it's Friday, and you it's know what Friday. that means. It's, it's Plant, plant Chat, Chat Friday. Friday, yeah. I know, we're so corny. We love Plant Chat Friday because we get to talk about plants. Yep. And today's plant is super timely because this weekend, right. in the 4th of July, we're talking about the Kufia vermilionaire uh, large firecracker plant. I know, this is about as, as crazy as we get on the 4th of July. We talk Ooh, about the crazy. plant firecracker <laughs> plant, right? Yeah. So we've got a lot to share with you and we we're do. really excited because it's it's an awesome plant. It is it's super beautiful. Awesome. Hummingbirds just like love this plant. So it's yep. really a, a lot of fun to have in your yard. Yep. Yeah, you guys, every Friday we actually feature a different plant from around our yard and we teach you about plant care and how to how to care for it and grow it. And if you ever see a plant around our yard that you want us to feature, just let us know by emailing us at Sean and Allison at SpokenGarden.com or let us know in the just in the comments down below. Yeah, guys, and if you just want to know more about gardening in general, if you're a first time gardener, check out our first time gardener growing plants and flowers book on Amazon and that link will be down below. So too. with all that, Let's get to yeah, it. Let's, let's show the plant. It. This is an awesome plant. Here we go. So guys, without further ado, here we are. This is the Kufia vermilionaire large firecracker plant. And we just planted this this spring and we are so, we feel so lucky to have it in our garden. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this thing. Look at this plant. It's got these long trumpet shaped tube looking flowers. And this is what Allison was talking about with the, uh, with the hummingbirds. This plant really attracts the hummingbirds. It is the mecca of uh, our garden for hummingbirds, really. Since we planted this plant and it's, it's been flowering, we've seen hummingbirds over at this plant feeding almost every single day. It's so awesome. It just really just draws them in. And uh, it really enhances the feel and the enjoyment of our garden and hopefully if you have this plant your garden too so getting into the meat of this plant it's plant facts right we're going to do the plant facts i'll do the plant facts and then allison's going to tell you how to apply all of that stuff and, uh, and use it in your garden and that type of thing so here we go this plant is hardy in zones 8a to 11b it's a perennial in those zones now it's sold as an annual, but uh, and also on provenwinners.com, if you go there, they'll, they'll say this plant is an annual, but it is hardy in zones 8A to 11B. That means it's actually hardy down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty cold, right? So really cool plant. This plant is drought tolerant, it's heat tolerant. Um, again, it loves, it brings in the hummingbirds. Uh, this plant needs full sun and it needs six plus hours um, in full sun to uh, to live its best life out in your garden. So this plant will get 18 to 28 inches tall, so about a foot and a half to about two feet tall, and it only gets about 12 inches to 18 inches wide, really. So it's it is a mounding formed type of perennial plant. Now with that full sun, it does need uh, regular watering, but once it gets established, it needs very little watering. So there's an establishment period, right? Especially if you're going to have this as a perennial, you got to get it established. Now usually it takes about a year. Some Sometimes two years, depending on where you live and how harsh or, or different your environment and climate is from year to year. So be aware of that. Um, it needs well-draining soil. Um, and also, it uh, in that first year of establishment, go ahead and over the winter, mulch it. Mulch around the roots and stuff to get that insulation and protect it. And then in the springtime, what you're going to want to do is remove that mulch because it won't need it. You can keep the mulch if you want. If we had the mulch down, we would just keep it around it, but it, um, Proven Winners says that you need to remove that in the spring and summer. So with the regular watering, you also want to fertilize this plant on a regular basis, on a schedule. It'll really enhance the plant itself. It'll keep it healthy. It'll make sure that it keeps blooming and you get more blooms than if you didn't fertilize it. Uh, another thing to know about the Kufia, uh, this large firecracker plant, is you don't want to prune it in the winter time. If, if this is a perennial where you live, like it is where we live, and we live in zone 8B, um, we can overwinter this plant. Well, if you overwinter this plant, you don't want to prune it in the winter time. What you want to do is you want to prune it in the spring. Once you start seeing the new growth start, then you can prune it, then you can shape it, but don't prune it in the winter time. And guys, one last thing I wanted to tell you is that this plant, you don't have to deadhead it. It's, it's a, it doesn't need to be deadheaded throughout the whole summertime. Isn't that cool? It just kind of self cleans. It drops its flowers. Here's one right here. It just, there's a whole bunch actually right here. It's dropped its flowers after they're done and it just kind of sheds them by itself. You don't need to go in and cut it. You don't need to prune anything away right now unless you want to shape it and do that. But the way ours is grown right now, it's perfect. It's filling out this side of the pot. It's looking good. Okay, you guys, so Sean just talked about plant care and just general growing conditions for this awesome plant. 
Um, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to use it in your landscape and companion plant ideas and just how to kind of or, or arrange it maybe in a container because this is a great container plant. So we have this huge barrel and we thought this would be an awesome plant to kind of pair with this beautiful yellow blanket flower. Oh, look at that. This is also from Proven Winners. Wow. And this is also Proven Winners. This is just kind of a big um, trio of Proven Winners beautiful plants. This is Dreamsicle Calabroca or Calabrocoa, depending on how you say that. So we loved the color combination. It's a, as you can see, the firecracker plant, the blooms are kind of a reddish orange color and they almost have a little, little hint of yellow on the tip maybe, or even kind of a greenish whitish color. It's very, um, very striking. And we loved the idea of pairing it with yellow and orange and just making a very bright container that just, everything is just growing into each other very well and filling in. This plant, this firecracker plant, is actually could be used as a filler in any container you use. So we kind of put it in the back because it is going to be a little bit taller than this blanket flower, although it's deceiving right now because it hasn't really reached its full height yet. So we, it's probably, this, this is probably the longest piece right here. It's maybe a foot tall right now, and it could go another up to about two feet high. As Sean mentioned, about 28 inches is a mature height. So we expect that this plant will fill out to about 18 inches wide and then up to probably, probably pretty close to two feet. So the Calabrocoa is just filling in in the front as a low grower. And then again, this blanket flower is pretty much max height for this plant. So you can see how we paired that and how just the colors just pop. Now you can also, this firecracker plant, you can also pair with any other sun loving plant that could be a heat tolerant um, companion plant. So maybe lantana, any of your ornamental grasses, um, some salvias, like specifically salvias that don't like really moist soil, those would be a great companion. You could, you could just pair it with so many things, so many options, so many color combinations. Um, so not only are these great for containers, you could put them in the landscape. There's a, you know, you could maybe border a pathway with just firecracker plants. And again, knowing that you're, it's just a hummingbird haven, they love it. So again, like Sean explained, this tubular or trumpet shaped flower is just perfect for hummingbirds. They actually fight over this plant and our hot lips salvia, which is a little bit away from us mm -hmm. over there. So they're, they're in our yard a lot, let's put it that way. One thing we didn't mention yet is the soil we're using in this container. And this is just a basic potting soil mix. We wanted to use that because we thought that would be a great, um, great option for these three plants. And they're, as you can see, they're thriving in here. They're doing very well. We had a really big heat wave recently of very unseasonable weather for the Pacific Northwest where we live in zone 8B. Um, we had over a hundred for a few days in a row and these plants did awesome. We just made sure they were very well watered. We watered usually in the morning and at night on those hot days and they did very well. So Sean might've mentioned, I think Sean mentioned this already that once they're established, all three of these plants can be considered drought tolerant. They're also heat tolerant. So again, they make a great match with each other because of all of the growing conditions they have that are very similar. So guys, uh, one last thing we wanted to talk to you about is the pests. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah, the firecracker plant, um, it is susceptible to aphids. It's susceptible to Japanese beetles and white flies. Yeah. So just a couple of the common ones you might see around your garden anyway. So just keep an eye out for those. There's different treatment methods for each, but, or each pest. So, uh, just research that online. If you have any of those problems. Yep. So that's all we got for you for this large firecracker plant, this vermilionaire kufia, beautiful plant. Yeah, we're loving it. Really highly recommended. If you're thinking about adding one to your garden, do it because especially if it, if you fit within zones 8A through 11B. Oh yeah, and if, even if you want it as an annual, uh, it's still good and you're gonna get lots of hummingbirds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely an awesome um, bonus. Yeah, so hey guys, with that, leave any of your comments or questions down below for us. We love hearing from you, and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest garden care videos. Yeah, with that, um, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for being here and for watching, yep. and Thanks, let us guys. know, yeah, any questions you have about this awesome plant. Um, we hope you have a very happy and safe, safe. 4th of July. Yes, And yes. we'll see you next time. Yep, see you next time, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.